and welcome to a, another video. Today we are looking at the two notes wall of sound. So this free plugin Friday, we're looking really, really in depth. And the reason I wanted to look at it this week is because at the moment until the 11th of May, you get five extra free cabs with the two notes um, wall of sound plugin. Uh, I'm not affiliated with two notes at all, and I haven't actually used this plugin much. But I thought, see me and get five free cabs, you can load your IRs, and it's free. We really need to check it out for all the guitarists and all the studio guys that uh, reamp and do all that stuff where they want to have a comprehensive plugin to kind of get that proper cabinet tone. Uh, so if I don't look at the camera, it is because it is in the center of my two screens and I'm looking at the screen. Uh, I've just noticed on the last few videos I've done with this kind of uh, setup, I don't really look at the camera that much and I'll try and do that a bit better. Uh, so straight up what we were using was the cab that comes free, uh, the Brit Vintage C, which is obviously a Marshall. And I've got set a 57 and a ribbon 121, which is a classic combination I like to use on a lot of guitars. Now what we're doing uh, signal wise at this stage, so I'm running my pedal board, I was running a looper, uh, running a couple of drive pedals into a Vox AC50, a 1965 AC50. And basically that gives me a very clean pedal friendly tone, but we're gonna look at a lot of things. We're gonna look at using some free plugins uh, to get the guitar sound. So just DI in uh, free guitar plugins. We're gonna look at stuff in this track I've got here. We're gonna look at uh, using the power amps in here with pedals um, because I don't have a separate preamp I can't really test it with a preamp, but I can use the pedals more like a preamp and we can see what we get. Uh, so first off, I'm just gonna go through the features and then we're gonna skip two tones in this song. So I think this gives a good example of all different tones. Then we're gonna get playing like on all those other things I said. So it is gonna be a bit of a long video. I'll try and put various chapters in the description so if you need to skip ahead to see something that applies to you something you want to hear in the plugin uh yeah i'll do that so let's just first go through some features just so you kind of understand the plugin and then some sounds so i'm going to put this guitar away and we'll move to pictures so basically the plugin has two different modes you have this mode and you have arcade mode and the difference is this is more of your controlled mode so you basically have your cabs here, you can run as many different uh, cabs and mic combinations as you can add. Uh, you have your choice of cabinet, your choice of microphone here. Now, if you're using IRs, of course, you wouldn't have a choice of microphone. You just load your IRs in, which we'll get into uh, probably at the end of the video um, because that's probably where I'm going to use it because I've got a bunch of IRs. Uh, you've got an EQ, got an exciter, which is kind of like that... Um, BBE exciting kind of thing. It kind of gives you this glassy kind of tone. Uh, a compressor, which is really cool. Kind of, I feel like it's a little bit 1176-ish, really nice. You've got reverb, which has some convolutions, I think. I'm not sure if it's convolutional or algorithmic. I know custom is obviously algorithmic, uh, but all the different um, rooms and such, it's great just to give you a bit more of that feel and not so much the direct IR sound. Uh, obviously input and output and here is where you control it so basically you want you've got your distance and your center so distance is as the name says how far away your mic is away and the cool thing about the bikes is they stay in phase when you change the distance where normally you'd have to check the phase because of the delay time creates phase problems uh, Center is how far away from the center of the cone you've got. I tend to like, for example, 57s to be about the off center. So that's here. Uh, now we'll come back to front and back. Uh, you got very phase, which adjusts the phase, and it's great for fitting in with sources where, say, you've got a DI guitar with a guitar amp, and you're going through this, and then you have the mites guitar amp to get the phase aligned. 
Now this is one of the coolest features and something you don't get on a lot of plugins is overload and that's the sound of speaker distortion. Now the only other thing I know that does this is the UA Audio Aux which models speaker distortion and it probably models it better than this does but it's a really cool feature to have because it's something you miss with IRs because you IRs don't generally capture uh, the non-linear aspects like distortion is actually capture the frequency response so be able to add speaker distortion which is on a lot of classic records is awesome and then you have a dry wet in case say you wanted a bass cab or something and you wanted to get the dry or you're you're going through an interesting fuzz tone uh you can bring in some of the dry as well without going through the cab eq is quite comprehensive um oh before we go to the eq front and back basically i skipped it but you can mic the back of your cab. Now, obviously, in a closed cab, you probably don't really want that. But in an open cab, it's great for getting that sense of room, that, that extra 3D depth, like on an AC30 or something. Uh, if you mic the back, you kind of can add that to the front. And I think in this case, it's in phase, whereas micing in real life, you have a lot of trouble getting the phase right. You can measure it from the speaker cone and all kinds of things and then flip the phase but it can be a bit of a nightmare and this is just a quick way to do it uh, so eq you've got your bands here you got guitar which sets your bands up uh, this is a high pass filter or low cut as it's known and then you've got basically parametric eq here um, but guitar mode sets the frequencies to you know those set frequencies there bass mode changes them and then parameter means you can expand it and you can turn them on and off, choose your own frequencies, cues, types of EQ and such. So it's a full featured EQ there. Exciter, as I said, is an exciter. You got low and high. Compressor, bit 1176-ish. You got threshold ratio, goes up to 20 to 1. Attack, release, makeup gain, and the reverb section. So that is pretty much the front panel of this, except for the power amp, which we'll look at later. Um, but basically, it allows you to use a preamp or a pedal or something that doesn't have power amp saturation, doesn't have the power amp kind of tone, and adds power amp. And you have uh, eight different power amps, single-ended and push-pull, different valve types. You've got your presses and death controls, pentode and triode. You can link them. Like you can link these, you don't have to. Um, yeah, it's fully featured and features parent distortion. Uh, and here, down here, you can turn everything on and off for each kind of different uh, cab thing you're doing. You can link the two across here. Uh, you can add more. You can pan them and you can solo mute just if you want to check them. It is great in that sense. Uh, so I'm just going to quickly show you arcade mode, which basically is a very simplified version and it does a lot of stuff under the hood. So for example, with EQ it, and Exciter, it kind of just does it for you with one control. You don't really control the frequencies. So we'll switch to arcade mode. Uh, everything in arcade mode is kind of different to the preset mode. So it's not going to carry it over in the same way. So this is what this warning uh, shows you. Um, but basically you lose your parameters. So it, you kind of want to decide what mode you want to start in at the beginning. Okay, so this is arcade mode. As I said, it is much more simple. Uh, you turn the power amp, power amp up or down. You don't really have a choice of tubes or anything. You got your input gain. You got your tone control, which just um, changes kind of where the mic is sitting as well as EQ. You got your contour, which is the EQ. You go vintage or modern. Um, and we will briefly look at it. You have harmonics, which is your speaker distortion, but it's kind of different. It's got a destroy mode as well, which is really cool if you want weird fuzz tones. Compressor is much more simple. Um, distance, still got distance close and far, and then your pan and volume. So we're going to stay in the other mode most of the time. Oh, and also you can change the room uh, of each side, which is pretty cool. And the reason we've got two sides is because I'm running a stereo track. If you're running a mono track, you only have one side and you can't use the pan controls, obviously, because it's a mono track, but you can still use multiple cabs and whatever. It's just in mono. Um, but we're using a stereo track because I do want to show uh, how you can do it in stereo. What we might do is just add a chorus or something. 
before the plugin um, and do stereo. So I'm going to switch back to simulation mode. Um, and what we'll do is we'll just run that loop that I've got. It's basically a Wampler Pinnacle on running into that with the telly. Not the best loop. We're going to run the loop so I can just quickly go through the cabs uh, just to give all of you a sound you know, early on in the video so you can kind of hear what the included cabs sound like before we go really in depth with going into the mix and such. So this is just what I've set up. I'll just turn it back on. So what we might do is just work on one at a time. So I'm going to use this one. So we'll keep on the Brit Vint C. I'm just going to bring the volume down a little bit and we'll um, change all these things. Now, I've noticed I've got this running on a lot of tracks and it's quite CPU intensive. So my computer isn't just handling it very well, but yours may differ. So hopefully it does. Um, but yeah, if it freezes and stuff, it's probably more my computer than it is the plugin. So we're going to keep on that. Um, I will just show you what cabs you get. Let's just stop that. Uh, we'll go, so you got 1x12, three options. You got a Celestian Ruby, a Rectifier, and a Sorbella, which is really nice. You've got a Rev open back and a High Watt Fane close back. And this is the Brit Vinci C. So let's go back to that and listen to the different mics. So we're going to keep that at the centre here, it's how I like it, and we'll just go through them. and we're back again. And so let's have a look at these controls quickly. Distance is quite obvious. And it works really well with something like a condenser. So say we go to the condenser 87. And you blend that in, and we'll look at blending in a minute. Uh, no center. And this is probably more obvious with the 57. Next, I want to look at this overload function. And there you get some speaker distortion. I'll change mics to maybe a 421. And of course, all this still kind of um, changes the tone with the overload up. And last, I want to look at back. Now, this is a Marshall, so the back's going to sound pretty dull, but can be used for effect too. Get the idea. I'm going to put a, another uh, side on. So what I've got is a ribbon on here and um, we'll change this back to a 57. And this is where you get the power by blending different amps. So I'm going to turn all of these off. We don't need them on. Um, but yeah, ribbon here, 57 here. The 57, I'm going to go, I reckon, 50% off. And let's just play that loop again. And you get that thickness from that ribbon, but that punch from the 57. So if I turn the 57 off, it's good, but it lacks a little bit of cut. So like, oh, we get more volume, obviously, but the cut is what's important. 
Now if we were to add another mic, maybe a room mic. Let's do here. Okay, so now we have uh, an extra two here. So um, I'm going to link these again and we're going to do these as room mics. So let's turn these off. We'll link them. I'm going to go to this and we'll bring the distance all the way up. And then the difference we're going to have between them, and we've got them panned, is going to be the type of condenser. We add back in our close mics. So if we mute the room, the room, the distant mic. Which would fit great in a mix, but sometimes you want that fuller sound, especially if you're playing along. the entire time this video because it will drive all of you quite insane um, but I just wanted to basically show that kind of thing that you could do and straight away before we get into much more kind of different cabs so next one I want to do is get this track now I've put it on all of these um, sections of this track I've just recorded the guitars they're not edited or anything I'm probably gonna have to redo a few but it's kind of a full section in the end of the chorus with a lot going on and we'll break down each of the guitar sounds and I actually want to start with distorted guitars and then we're going to go through a bunch of clean guitars um, and have a listen so let's uh, close this I'm just going to turn monitoring off and actually turn this plug in off to save me a little bit of CPU uh, and we're going to open mixer mode because that's going to show me everything. Um, so what I want to start on first is the distorted guitars. Uh, there is three different tracks, um, but basically in this section there's two hard panned and I'm going to pull each of them up. Okay, so what we're going to do is look at this track now. Um, it's just the guitars have just been recorded, haven't been edited or anything yet. Um, and basically, we're going to start with the distorted guitars, but I'll play the whole kind of loop of this section first. You can hear it, and then we'll have a look, deep dive into uh, what we can do on each of them. Now, I've just put um, Wall of Sand on everything. I haven't really set it on anything, so it's going to sound eh but it, it's kind of all on default, but have a listen. That's basically the whole loop. So let's just have a look at these uh, distorted guitars. Now they're panned left and right. Um, there's another guitar that comes in in the section before in the solo and this guitar isn't in. So we're just gonna have a look at these. Now I've made it uh, smaller so we can see if I just now need to go over here. Uh, whoops, and open this one. So you should be able to see both. And, and we'll just solo those guitars. So this is what they currently sound like. Which is fine. But I want it a bit thicker and I want it to sit in there better. So let's go through some cabs on distorted guitars. Um, now I'm gonna put the link on. Now that's both 421s on them. I like 421s on distorted sound. Go back to the uh, grid, which is very different, especially on a ribbon. Now we go to a 421.
A lot more high end, a lot more low end. Kind of a scoop in the mids, very different mids. And go to a 112, like a recto. Recto. Very different again. And different mic is going to be different. Now this has got different mics in this cab and it's really, really cool. How's that sound in the mix? So this is a completely different sound. Really contained, real tight. So I think we're going to go with maybe this one, 2 by 12 I like the 160. But we want a little bit more cut, so I'm going to unlink both of them. And so let's just go on this left one for now. I think I might add a 57. Turn the 57 up a little bit. Mic it there, and the ribbon we might mic front on. On the left, I'm gonna move the center a little bit, and let's have a look at another mic, maybe a 421 on this. together and in the mix so we haven't even touched EQ or Excited or anything or comp which we'll go through on the clean sounds because I do want to do some stuff but straight away I actually kind of like that already better than I had it before which is the rev cab um, and it you know and it just kind of works and you heard what these different cabs sound like. So I wanted to move to some clean guitars that happen in the chorus. Now there are these two clean guitars here. So we're obviously going for this kind of jangly chorus thing here. So it's the right one. And here's the left one. I kind of like what I've got. Uh, that is the Rev212, and the right one is this Ruby, which sounds very different. It's got this very closed sound. So what I want to do is turn the link off and get a little bit more openness. So let's just solo uh, this. Now these are panned at the moment, but I might uh, pan them center. Now I want to add a bit of compression. And let's add some EQ. So I want to go to guitar. I'm not sure if, how well you can see that. Um, we can make this a bit bigger just while we're doing this. Uh, so you've got this size here. OK. 
okay, but a f uh, which one is it? Oh. So I'm just going to solo it. So the EQ and comp off. Cool. Uh, so this is the only issue I see is I wouldn't mind being able to link just the EQ and stuff without linking the mic because that way I can make changes only once, but it works. Uh, so let's go and do the same with the comp on this side. Less aggressive. I didn't even click on it. Oh, that was my problem. And see, that's where it can get a bit confusing which one you clicked on. Uh, but let's just do that. And a little bit of exciter, I reckon. And let's put them both back on together. Yeah, that doesn't really work. Turn the exciter off. same to the other side but let's do a little bit differently so I'm gonna link these again and then add the compressor so we can hear what it does to both of them and then unlink them and just change this to a 421 together. So quickly, quickly we are able to completely kind of change the sound um, and I didn't even change the cab in this instant um, but basically change some mics, change what we're doing, add some compression. Um, and then if we listen to the whole thing in the mix now, I think it works pretty well. Um, let's listen. They're getting that kind of uh, jangly thing I wanted without being too bright and too harsh. Um, so the other thing is, before we move on to the chorus, is these washy uh, things you can hear and I want to go to town with these. So I was thinking we stay on this 2 by 12 um, I'm going to link him again and do what we did before, uh, which is the compressor. Too aggressive the compressor there. Let's just go here. A little bit of it. And a little bit of exciter. Nah, I am. Nah, I don't like the exciter. Maybe on the low end. Now, what I want to do here is add in a behind mic and a distance mic. Right, so I've clicked the add here. Like I said before, it seems to be quite CPU intensive and my computer is very much struggling when I do things like add it or if I have too many IRs loaded. Um, now, I'm not sure if this is a fault with the plugin or my PC at the moment. I don't seem to have any problem with any other plugins at the moment doing this. So maybe it just 
wreaks havoc on the CPU. Or maybe it's not optimized for Windows 7 because I'm still running Windows 7. Um, so you might differ. So don't take that as a reason not to try the plugin. So we're going to link these again uh, so we can choose the right cab and choose the right mic, which is going to be an 87, I reckon. Uh, unlink it. Now this one is going to be the back. And this one is going to be at a distance for 100%. So let's just solo these two. And pan and center. So this is the back. And we'll probably dial them down a little bit. So I'm gonna turn them off. So you've got that kind of shine. Put the Mac on, you got a little more depth. I'm going to change this one here. We're going to unlink them now. And change this to a 421 again. To add a bit more shine back in. Turn that up. Turn the exciter off because you didn't like it. And more the back. Back down. Cool, in the mix. Turn the upper level down as so much. Those other guitars are probably a little bit loud now, but like I said, we're not mixing. We're just looking at what it sounds like. And last, it is another watch guitar doing the exact same thing. But this time, what I think I want to do is try the uh, this cab because we haven't tried it. Mic it from a long distance and add some room reverb. So now I'm mixing cabs. We've got this uh, cab mic'd with a 421 fairly close, and then this cab, which is solo, doing this kind of more ambient thing. And I think it works for this track. So if we listen to those clean guitars together, I should be able to go. Uh, we just go clean guitars together. I can really hear that compression on those guitars. It might not necessarily be what I want all the time. Um, I will probably, when I actually mix it, use different compressors just because I want a different flavor. But it is cool to have that compression option. So I just want to quickly look at the solo because there is something special I want to do with the solo. So I'm just going to go find that section of the song which is here, and it has slightly different guitars. Uh, so where we were with the distorted guitars before, I'm gonna copy over the one so it works in here. Uh, so let's just unmute it. Solo. Okay. So you can hear straight away, I only played a snippet of it, but that solo is pretty indistinct. Uh, that is intentional in the sense of how I recorded, but I wanted to stick through a lot more. So if we go to these distorted guitars, I'm just going to uh, turn that one off and put this one back in. Uh, the one we changed earlier to get that uh, vibe. So I'm gonna solo the uh, solo as long as this kind of works. See, yeah, my computer just doesn't really, really like Torpedo for some reason. Anyway. Larger. Uh, I think I want a 412. Uh, 
Now these are panned and I want to keep them panned and I want to do a completely different mic here. Uh, actually first, before we change the mic, I just want to do a touch of EQ. going to be a 4 2 one. Actually, I want to try 160. Now we're getting somewhere. Now I want to overload this one a little bit. And actually both of them, I want to cut out some low end. Now I'm getting some ghost notes, which are cool. And now we've got a completely different sound. Uh, I'm turn that down. The ghost notes are what really cool about this overload feature. actually want to change it a bit. Yeah, it's a bit hot there. Uh, let's make it large again. Now this is a problem I have found it does. It automatically when you put a new plugin in tries to add all of it and this takes up heaps of memory because I have so many IRs so it's painful and won't even let me choose the different cabs right now, but we're just going to change mics. Uh, let's solo this up. Okay, cool. I want to go with the Brit again. Yeah, that's better. Keep on the Nightfall. Uh, let's link them. Uh, whoops. Brit. Unlink them. This is going to be the Nightfall. Make this kind of a bit nasty. Control levels a little bit better. That was basically how I did it in a track, completely changing the sounds and everything. Now, do I want to keep those sounds? Maybe not, but you can see how you can quickly just morph sounds, how the different cabs sound. Uh, I think we went through nearly all the cabs. Uh, we didn't look too much at the bella, which we can look at now because I want to play some guitars because I want to look at the power amp and doing some other things. Because So these are all basically direct recorded from my amp. Um, with my pedal board and such. And so let's have a look now at doing something different. Now I might just turn these off so we can free up some of that CPU. Um, here we go. So I've got this track here. Now what this one is, 
if we it opens and like i said what happens with a lot of these is it, it tries to access all my impulse responses and bloody takes ages uh, so if you see it's got this many items available and that's why it won't load and if we do that it's six items available which is six cabs uh, included and then it works fine uh, so yeah the six cabs do 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 uh, so two that come with it normally and then the five free ones uh, which doesn't make six does it one two three four five six the four free ones <laughs> Uh, so I'm going to grab my guitar again and let's have a look at some power amps. Okay, so that lead tan we heard at the beginning uh, is a Maxon Rod 880. So what I want to do here is have that directly in. So this is what happens if the Rod 880 is just DI into a cab. Oh, you barely even hear that. It's okay, but it's not really what we want. So we can use a power amp and then it's using the pedal as a preamp. So just start with the 6L6. Straight away, it sounds different. Put that volume up. We're gonna put link on so it links both power amps. Here we go. The thing I find is it lacks a little bit of low end. Um, I'm just going to turn up my input levels. It's a bit better. Lacks a little bit of low end, um, but you do have the depth and presence, so you can kind of get that low end back. Um, so we're going to keep that on that. I'm actually going to show you how it actually sounds pretty good, fairly clean. Um, but let's have a look at some different different things if it lets me. So now in the single ended section, let's go through the single ended. So we've got six L six. Big and hefty, and this is still single ended. Um, and then we have before, which is push pull. Uh, the EL 34 push pull. Pretty thin, I think, the EL 34 are, but still. turn the max on off and basically this is my guitar straight in straight into this so this isn't meant to be a guitar amp plug-in but it can sound good with this power section on so if we go back to maybe AL84s and crank that volume pull this master volume back wish I was a master volume that'd be cool Compression. Now I've got a little bit of a preamp pedal. It is kind of clean, but add them together, it's it's basically a boost pedal, really. The 
link back on. Some reverb. And go into hall. acceptable clean sound. And then if you want something a bit hotter. Dream, which is about all it cost me like 25 bucks. It is a clone of a Joyo US Dream, which is a clone of a Sewer Riot. Um, but basically just that into this plugin and it's actually an okay for you, so. But we can sort that through various different things. Maybe we go uh, the 160, turn that up a little bit, um, uh, bring this to the front, uh, bring that to the front. <laughs> can hear some pretty ratty noise there though. section using pedals of preamps of course it would work with your own preamps if you have something like an ADA preamp or a JMP or even any valve preamp or you could just use your effects loop out um, that is just the preamp of your guitar amp and then use the power amp in here of course you need to make sure your uh, amp has a load on it 
Um, preamps don't need a load, but an amp that has a power section will need a load to stop blowing the power transformer. But it's a really cool use of this. Um, and if you know anything about the hardware from two notes, it means a lot of people uh, can use their pedals. So two notes make preamp pedals, and that's kind of where the whole thing comes from. But in your door, it is a great thing to use. Now, uh, what I really want to do is show what many of you probably will be using this for, um, and that is when you have your own plug-in uh, guitar amp emulator. So this is probably more common than the other uses I've shown, but it's the way I'm using it and that's why I wanted to show it. And not a lot of reviews really look at uh, using it on uh, actual amps and stuff because uh, that generally isn't done. So I wanted to pull up something that's old but everyone knows kind of well and that is guitar amp. And so I just want to go, one of my favorite guitar amp is the jump. Uh, so turn this cab off and let's turn the overloads down and hear how it sounds with guitar amp. So I'm going to make this smaller uh, guitar amp. I'm going to hide you over here so we can see everything and let's move that like that. There we go. Now we can see everything. You might know it. Bit bloody loud, isn't it? Uh, so I'm going to turn this gain down here and that down. exactly sure what that's obviously coming from my pedal board but I'm not exactly sure why uh, which is very annoying to have that much noise getting a new noise from the pedal board so I'm just gonna go straight in and do everything in the box now and not use pedals so got a jump here in guitar rig old plug-in uh, but a lot of people have used it People know it well, so I thought it'd be a great example. We're going to look at some free stuff. match some cabs so we're gonna go one side is that the other side is Celestian Ruby mic straight up like this now this now we don't have them panned let's pan them and what I'm going to do is add a chorus or another stereo unit in here actually gonna put that on high uh, inside guitar rig so if we go to modulation now I really like doing this kind of gives the double tracked sound just put the chorus on we put on stereo we put this on stereo <laughs> This 
starting to be a bit louder. And this ruby a bit off center. Let's have a look at some clean. Uh, pump that chorus intensity and width up and... Okay, maybe not that much intensity. this overload on let's turn the overload down there um yeah i don't know what's going on with my computer i keep saying that so apologies for any of glitches um when i look through the video i'm hoping there's not too many video glitches in here um yeah it seems this is really just taking my computer to the pits um now lastly i just wanted to have a look at using your own uh actually no we wanted to do a free plugin so um I'm just gonna shrink that back down and let's replace guitar rig with a free plugin that I did a review on. It's really cool. Uh, called Roots. It's by ML Sound Lab, Amped Roots, but doesn't come up like that in my door. Uh, so let's turn the IR off in here, keep it on this setting. Bit more output, bit less input. Less gain, a bit more volume, presence high. Significantly quieter than guitar rig. settings, that's the settings out there. Okay, now let's look at using IR. So I'm gonna use a few free IRs. Let's put this back up. We're gonna keep this high gain sound just because uh, we won't do this for too long. Now you gotta click user. Now the way you do it is you go into menu and you decide uh, here, select user impulse directory. And so for me, my impulse directory is where all of these are. So we're gonna load some free IRs because this is a free plugin. So you can use this plugin with these IRs if you'd like. Uh, let's put link on so I can choose 
the IRs. Um, uh, so we're going to go see cow cabs. Uh, we're going to go to the diesel, I think. Uh, modern. And let's go dual mic mixers. Um, actually, it's okay. Mixers. Con uh, modern 3. What does this sound like? Wait for it to load. <laughs> Of course, you don't have to use a mix, or you can use two different mixes. So maybe we change this one uh, to the same diesel uh, modern mix, but we use a vintage mix. So one side is a modern mix, the other side is a vintage mix. So let's slow this side. I'm not much of a high game player, but that is fun to use. And these Seco cabs are bloody cool. Um, you can completely change it to something else in the Seco range. So let's say, look in the, um, you know, a basement 212, you know, because that's what you use usually with a high gain 5150 style lamp is a basement uh, 212. So I'm just going to solo that. Um, yeah, it seems to have struggle time loading the... Uh, samples. I don't know, it's because I've made it available to so many. Maybe it's my hard drive, but it's not a separate hard drive. So much low end. So let's pan these straight up and blend them. And uh, now they might not blend in phase. I'm not sure how phase aligned all of these are, but let's um, pull the volume out and solo. Okay, cool. And solo, if it can. You never had any other problems with any plugin. Unusable amount of low end, but it's kind of cool, isn't it? And as you can see from CK Cabs, I got so many IRs like like all these and then all these packs C cab choices we got the studio pack collection that's got heaps of irs in it christmas pack it's got a bunch of stuff british invasion american invasion um even coming soon irs like the diesel and stuff are in here um so i put the link below to ck cabs uh website so you can download these irs of course you don't have to use them in wall of sound you can use them in any ir loader but because we're looking at wall of sound you can basically get this plugin free. You can get the fluff bloody high gain plugin free, a bunch of Seiko cabs, and not really complain about getting bad tone unless, I mean, this is a $300 guitar. So unless it's like a $50 guitar that doesn't stay in tune, then you should be pretty right to do stuff for free. So thanks for watching. I know it's been long and arduous. Um, I'm hoping you got plenty out of it and you go and grab Wall of Sound before. 
before the deal ends, uh, which is the 11th of May. So in a couple of days. Uh, so yeah, thanks for watching. Please subscribe and like, and let me know if you want to look me to look any more at some CK cabs. I've got two videos on the CK cabs um, IRs, but I'm happy to do more as they're great. Might do them loading them up in here or loading them up in NAT IR, which is what I usually use. NAT IR is a lot more CPU friendly, um, and this is a lot more fully featured and allows me to do a lot more things. So it's much of a muchness. Uh, so thanks for bearing with me, and I'll catch you next time.